In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Something is wrong with human life. Every sane person confesses it. We desire peace, but we have war. We need harmony in our homes, but we have conflict, division, and strife. We pray peace of mind, but we have none. We try to manufacture peace of mind, but can't. And we ask why. St. Paul said in Romans, I don't understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I don't do the good I want, but the evil I do, I do not want, is what I do. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver from me this body of death? With that, within every man, within every person, there is a great gulf between what he is and what he ought to be. The doctor says to the patient, stop worrying, get rid of the resentments, or it will destroy you. The stress will kill you. Yet this death that cures the life of mankind and threatens every one of us and our loved one goes on and on. Geneticists blame it on our genes. Physiologists blame, blame it on our glands. Sociologists hold it improper and adjust it to the environment. Educators claim it as improper training. And the Bible says it is the common denominator of all of these. It is sin, which most people dismiss dismissed today as a medieval invention. The basic meaning of the word sin is to miss the, the mark. But sin is not just missing the mark, nor is it just ignorance. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Nor is it the lack of understanding. It isn't immaturity. It isn't the de destructiveness causing us to hurt ourselves and others, nor is it the disobedience of the law. All of these are not sin, but they are the result of sin. Sin is that within us which causes us to miss the mark, even when we see it that keeps us in maturity, even the wanting maturity, that keeps us important and destructive, even though we desire to be potent and productive. And what is sin? Our Lord described it this way. Sin is misplaced self-love, seeking to save my own picture of the desirable in life. It is self-will refusing to accept the relationship with the Father and his family. It is self-sufficiency insisting on my own way and daring to believe that I can reach my self-chosen goal by my own strength. Examples of this is what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Sell all that you have and give it to the poor. What shall I do with my barns? What shall I do with my crops? What shall become of my soul? Give me what is mine. Do what I please with it. Unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. An author once wrote, 
My mind believes. My conscience approves. My heart applauds, but my mind is also set on too much else to trust effectively. It's a matter of finding life or losing it. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. The difference in people is not that some love life and some don't. But in some, the love is misplaced and warped in evil. They pursue the good with more and abhor the behooters. Or less, or they pursue the evil because they think it is good. The temptation to eat of the forbidden fruit came to Adam and Eve in the form of something that looked good. They saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight at the eyes, and the tree was to desire to make one wise. And this we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. No one chooses anything, however, evil, especially unless he believes it to be good. And he believes it to be good for him. Even the final act of escaping life through suicide is considered by man to be good for him and his loved ones. And this is a warped thought. For all sins of this are all the same, of course. One must say this. But all sins aren't of the same value. They are usually divided in two categories. Venial sin and deadly sin. The distinction between them is made by St. John the Evangelist who states the following on the first general epistle. Chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. That anyone sees his brother committing a sin which is not unto death, meaning mortal, God will give them life for those whose sin is not mortal. There is sin which is mortal. I do not say that one is to pray for that. All wrongdoing is all wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin which is not mortal. And which are these sins that are mortal, which are not mortal? Those sins which do not destroy the love for God and for fellow man, such as bad talk, actions as a result of anger, ignorance of foolishness, weakness, surprise, shock, and dire needs such as petty larceny. Generally speaking, the venial sins are those which no man can avoid except Christ and the Virgin Mary, and which no and which do not deprive us of the grace of God, nor do they subject us to eternal death. As St. Augustine also concluded, these are the sins which are remitted even in the afterlife, such as, such are not the ones which are not the result of total callousness, and faithlessness, but the ones which are committed by men who have preserved within them the seed of the faith of the Christian virtues, but they were derailed by infirmity of the will and the influence of the evil one into sin and bad habits, which they did not have the time to conquer while they were still in this life. And then, on the other hand, we have the deadly sins, which are those that destroy us and destroy the love for God and for fellow man, and separate us permanently from God. And they are pride, greed, gluttony, morality, hate, vengeance, and neglect. We also have two other deadly sins, the ancestral sin, 
which all of us are born, and which is washed away through holy baptism. And then we have the unforgivable sin, which is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven will be forgiven men. But blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. And this we read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, 32. When the Pharisees were accusing our Lord that he was acting in the name of the devil rather than, in, rather than by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were blaspheming. They were sinning against the Holy Spirit. Thus they were hardening their hearts against God to the point of not being able to receive the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit. This is unpardonable sin. Therefore, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the stubborn and deliberate rejection of a truth, witness, and obvious and unquestionable revelation and a stubborn resent resistance to the obvious energy of the Holy Spirit. Demonstration of such hatred towards the source of spiritual life and the giver of forgiveness precludes repentance. Consequently, the sin remains unforgiven because it is brought about by callousness of an evil and burnt out of consciousness. A good example of an unforgivable and unpardonable sin produced by these conditions is the sin of Judas, who after so many thefts, violations of sacred greed, lack of faith and hatred, exact vengeance, and betraying his Lord and Master. Each of us are called to forgiveness for the remission of our sins. Each of us has the ability to kneel down as the penitent tax collector who is unworthy to look up into heaven but ask for forgiveness. And as the penitent thief, ask Christ for forgiveness. We are all able to ask our Lord to forgive us our sins, especially in the days in which we live. This we ask in his mighty name. Amen.